Hi, I just thought I'd pop on today and talk about children and grief. It's National Children and Grief Awareness Month and what a better way but to share information about kids and grief. And I think I wanna start with a little bit of myths around children and grief. Oftentimes, you know, we, we think kids aren't grieving. They're not crying, they're okay. You know, kids are too young to really realize what, what death and loss means and so, um, or any loss in and um, and so they don't grieve like us us grown up adults and that's completely false you know kids grieve just the same as adults they just grieve in ways that we may not expect to see um, those things you know that typical they're not crying so they must be okay uh, and so I thought let's dispel a bit of myths um, let's discover a few different ways children grieve. Um, and I'm gonna create a little bit of a series around it. So if there's things that come up and you're like, mm, I wanna know more about that, can you, can you talk more about that? Please send me a message, drop me a, a comment, and I'm happy to explore a, a little bit more of different topics in different ways if that is. So today I kinda of wanted to talk about the five C's of children and grief. And this also applies to um, when somebody in the family is experiencing um, a serious illness. There's five questions that that uh, and it's escaping me who created these um, came up with so when I can figure out who I should pay tribute to uh, I'll drop a message in the comments to let you know that too. But the five common questions that are uh, often they find children experience um, the first one is did I cause it? Did I cause this to happen? A great example of this is you know um, mom or dad unfortunately go you know go out to go to work and on the way out the door there's a little bit of an argument and the kid says i just hate you i just wish you were dead and what happens unfortunately you know there's a tragic accident and mom or dad dies on the way to work and of course the kids first feeling is oh did i cause this did i did i cause this what I don't know whether people realize is kids have this, um, it's called age of magical thinking and adults do it too, but it's really common in kids that they, you know, they live in this magical world. You know, when they're born, I cry and food magically appears. If you think about cartoons and things like how many times does the road runner get run over and come back to life? Like there's this magical thinking that when I say things, it causes this to happen. They don't realize that, no, did you say that about mommy or daddy and it caused them to know, you know, to be in a car accident? No, but that's something that, that runs in kids' minds. So something to keep in the back of your mind when, when you um, have, have a child in your world that might be grieving. The next one is, can I catch it? You know, so oftentimes we use the language I caught a cold or, you know, I'm sick. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to go to visit auntie so-and-so's house because she has the flu and we don't want to catch it. And so, you know, when somebody has an illness that causes them death, they want to know, can I catch this too? Will this mean I will die? Which will lead into, you know, will you die? You know, is this something that, that can be passed on to other people around me? Are you going to catch it? You know, are you going to leave me too? Which is another one, you know. Will I lose my mom? Will I lose my dad? So that next C is, who's gonna take care of me? And the worry of, is something gonna happen to them? So I've lost this person and now who's gonna care for me? And often I'll see, you know, the, the child latch onto a, the next parent because they're so afraid that that parent is going to also leave them too, right? So who's gonna care for me? Is it you? And then am I gonna lose you too? Um, another, another C is could I have cured it? Is there something I could have done? Could I have brought them more soup or made them, you know, more comfortable and brought them more warm, cozy blankets. Oh, I know when mommy, when I get sick, she makes me chicken noodle soup. If I, if I had done that, could I have maybe made it better? 
Is there some way I, I could have, you know, made this better for them so that they didn't die? And the other really important one is, how do I can stay connected to this person? How do I stay connected to my loved one who's no longer here? I, I don't know how to do that. And I'm, you know, like all of us, we're mourning the loss of that attachment to that person. And so helping them create stories that stay connected to that person. Um, sometimes I'll help the, the family, the child create um, a memory box. And so, you know, they're off to school and they really want to come home and show daddy this really great artwork that, that now they can't because daddy's not here. And so we create this memory box so that they can put, you know, those things that I really, really want to share with daddy into that box. And, and I've often seen it grow when they become, you know, older and, and teenagers and they want to share stories with with mom or dad or you know the person they've lost and so they'll write them a letter and they'll put it in that memory box um, to help continue to stay connected to that person so there's just a few quick things on children and grief I thought that um, are always wise to know to help you navigate um, with your own children or children you have within your family as you navigate grief. And again, drop me a comment if this is like, yeah, I like that. I never thought about that. Can you tell me more? Or mm, I wonder about this. Can you talk more about this in children and grief? Um, and so watch out for another video. And yeah, I look forward to chatting with all of you soon.